Welcome back. In the last video, I showed you actually how to install and use GPTs. Now let's build our own. This is where the game changer is. I'm going to be creating a GPT from scratch for you guys. I'm going to be doing a cooking one to help you with, you know, all your needs in the kitchen. It's a great way to show you how to create your own while actually creating one that, you know, maybe I'll actually use. Let's do it. All right, let's roll up our sleeves, y'all. This is game time. Let's do it. No code required. We're going to go over to chat GPT. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to explore GPTs. It's going to pop up the menu and up at the top right, you're going to be able to see my GPTs and create GPTs. So you can, you know, maybe go back and edit your old GPTs, but let's create a new one. Boom. This is the, this is the menu. Here it is real quick on the top. There are two things. One is create. So this allows you to talk to GPT back and forth and it'll create a GPT for you. Um, it's a little simplified. It does a good job. You can go back and forth with it until you get the right results. That's a great way to do it, especially if you are a beginner, but I'm going to be going over to configure. We're going to do everything manually in this video because I think that is where the real juice is. All right. So name is going to be chef GPT. It's coming at you. All right, I'm going to add a description in there. Not super needed, but it'll help people understand what's going on if you share it with anyone. And you might as well share your hard work if you create your own custom one. So then moving down to instructions. This is the real meat and potatoes and why these things are so awesome. Well, it's one of them. So what I'm going to do is in here, I'm just going to give it some simple instructions on kind of how to act and what it is. So for instance, I put in you're a personal assistant, sous vide chef. You're ready to assist with recipes, cooking techniques, and culinary advice. So now whenever you create a new GPT chat with this one, it's going to know, hey, this is kind of what I'm thinking about, what I want to do. So you're never going to have to keep telling it over and over. Hey, I'm looking for recipes. Hey, I'm doing this. It already knows, which is super cool. And instructions is where you can really start to hone it in too. So this is where you could put in things like, hey, maybe I'm paleo or hey, I don't eat red meat or hey, this is kind of the macros and kind of the amount of protein I'm looking at. I really want meals that are protein focused. You know, those are all the things you can put in the instructions. So for me, I eat about anything and I'm just doing a general outline on how to do this. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but this is where you would put in all those specifics that make it tailored to you. That's what's so cool about this. And another pro tip for you on instructions is maybe you just have another window open and you go to GPT again. And you can say, help me come up with instructions. And then you can just talk it through. So you can say, hey, you know, I'm creating a GPT for helping me come up with recipes. These are the cooking utensils I have in my kitchen. Here are my dietary restrictions. Can you create a, a system prompt for me? And then we'll do it with you. That's a great way to do it as well. So now that we have instructions in here, great, great, great. Our GPT knows how to act, just phenomenal. There's also a couple other things we can start to do. So first, conversational starters, another not needed one, but it's a fun one to do. So you can do things that kind of get your mind started. So for instance, maybe you just put a couple in there for fun, or maybe you know you're going to be asking GPT a lot when you start a conversation for a specific query. You could say, what's a quick weekend dinner? Or what's a quick meal that I can make under 30 minutes? So whenever you open a new GPT, it's going to open up like this. This is your preview of what's actually going to happen. And you could just click these buttons and I'll immediately ask the GPT. It's cool. Not needed. All right. Going down below. This is where it starts to get super advanced and awesome. It's not too hard, but this is where it gets a little more advanced. So one of the cool things is, is you can add knowledge to GPT. So this makes it so it can pull from different resources and hone in your answers based on what you want it to. So for instance, I'm going to upload a few different things that I want it to kind of know and to process every time it's answering questions for me. So what I'm going to do is upload a PDF and I want it to be all about French cooking. So what I did was I went on and found a really cool book and PDF on French cooking by Julia Child, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. What I'm gonna do is just open that PDF. It's gonna add it down here. It's gonna upload it, You'll see a bar. This is a huge PDF. By the way, this is like a 700 page PDF. So that's why this is really cool. So you don't have to be like adding it into the chat for then it to be able to understand. It's just always gonna know every time you open this up. So now it's added in there, it can start to call to that really important. Alrighty. So a couple more things before we really start testing it out and seeing if this is all working. 
There's a few more things down here to uh, spice up your GPT. So you can do web browsing, totally recommend in this kind of scenario. I maybe want to pull from recipes that I've never seen before or maybe pull from online. This is what would allow you to do that. You can also have image generation. Um, I don't know, not really needed in this one, but it allows this GPT to actually create images based on what you want. And then code interpreter and data analytics. So I'm gonna turn that one on. Sometimes if you wanna like worry about nutrients and macros and a bunch of numbers, this one would be smart to turn on. Or obviously if you're creating a GPT for data analysis and code interpretation, and that's what you would do. Always upload this. So that allows for more functions. Actions is also another thing you can do. This is way too advanced for this uh, version of the video, but we will dive into that in the future because you can start to do some interesting things and make API calls, etc., etc. Not going to dive into it, but we got our GPT, the base version, all filled out. So now let's see if this actually is working and we're going to see if it's pulling from the knowledge and let's just see how it takes on questions. So you can start testing it and then going back and forth and changing your instructions to make sure it's performing how you want. So first, let's type in a message. I have chicken, I have broccoli, and I got rice. What can I make from that? Maybe give me some ideas. Throw it in. Bada bing, bada boom. With chicken, broccoli, and rice, can you create a delicious balanced meal? Here you go. So we're going to make chicken and broccoli rice casserole. Tells you the ingredients, breaks down the instructions on how to cook everything. Great. Cooking tips, make it your own. Homemade sauces, how to even deal with leftovers. Yeah, that's awesome. So then you could do even, it's like, ah, give me three more ideas. Maybe that's not quite hitting for you. Bada bing, bada boom. And it'll go through. Chicken, broccoli, stir fry. Great. Perfect, perfect. So, seems to be doing what I want it to. Like I said, if maybe you just want it to only give ideas and not actually the whole recipe every time, that's something you'd put in the instructions. Tell it, hey, just list it out. I don't want full in-depth instructions. All right, so then Let's try a different example. I want to see if it's able to pull from the French information I gave it. So here, what are the key techniques to making a perfect French roux? All right, let's see what it does. All right, so just simply notice how this GPT is staying focused on cooking. It's using culinary metaphors. It's drawing up specialized knowledge from the base we added. This is the point of these custom GPTs. This is a... This is a well-seasoned GPT now. <laughs> so I've just been focusing on the culinary GPT, but obviously you can make these things for everything. There's a lot of different use cases. So for instance, here's a few GPTs that I've been using every day that I tailor toward me. I have a fitness training GPT. I got a traveler planning GPT, and I even have a coding GPT. These are all tailored to the tools I'm using, my schedule, my preferences. That's what's so amazing about these. All right, before I hang up the apron, let's go over a couple key more ingredients for success using GPTs. Try to always be specific with your instructions. Always make sure you're regularly updating and refining your GPT. Use appropriate capabilities and then test thoroughly before sharing it to everyone. That's a key. Remember, creating a GPT is perfecting a recipe. It takes practice, patience, and refinement. Alrighty. Now you know how to make your own GPTs. Start making them, ask me questions if you got them. Would love to hear how you're using your GPTs and hey, maybe you got some good ones. Send them my way. I'll send over mine, you send over yours. With that being said, have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.